Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley and we're here to do a massive Napoleon uh, battle at sea. I'm going to try and zoom in and you can see already it's uh, slowing the game down a bit. This is because we're doing three versus three and each person has about five ships at their disposal. So things are bound to get a little hairy graphically. Um, but anyways, our, our fleet is huge. Our fleet is all British ships. Uh, whereas the opponents have a combination of British, French, and Spanish vessels, or Portuguese vessels. Um, so, somewhat interesting. Um, I'm going to go over this battle just as kind of from my own perspective, mostly because uh, naval battles get confusing if you zoom around, especially as you can tell here, the opponents have similar nation ships as ours. So I'm going to stay sort of from my perspective, which should give a little bit of clarity to the narrative. Um, just from a general strategy sense, my ally is here, and he has a couple of these first-rate 106-gun ships with one trailing in the rear with the admiral and then he has a third rate kind of in the mix and he's going to be pushing forward i send two of my heavy first rates now these have 122 guns and these are going to be kind of shadowing him making sure i give him cover and we're going for a heavy uh attack right through here you can see on the map we're kind of clustered together moving forward and then on the far side we have another one of our guys trying to engage the portuguese now i have two of my heavy heavy first rates and then over here i have a smaller detachment Ironclad, so very high armor moving forward with steam, so you can paddle up against the wind, which is going to be very helpful. And then I have two of these third rate, uh, like a Minerva and a Boyne, 64 guns. So they're meant to go upwind and just hold this force at bay. We can go ahead and see what's facing off against me. Um, and it's actually going to be a, an, an interesting composition. He's have these uh, Rezé, which are kind of, um, it comes from the sort of French term for the ship, which is supposed to be like a raised ship. Uh, that is to say, they would take down ships and kind of slim them down, make them smaller. So you kind of have something like a heavy frigate, um, and so they're they're interesting ships. They have less um, of a of a profile, so a little harder to hit, but they carry a lot of punch to them. And this uh, player specifically up the veterancy. You can see all of them are pretty high veterancy. Um, he has one first rate or two first rates, um, and then three of these razes. So not too scared of him, but I at least want to keep him at bay. So. My ironclad is going to start to turn. These ships are going to start to turn. I want to unleash and just pepper him. Say, hey, you know, this is the shooting distance. Make sure you stay away from me. Meanwhile, I'm going to be moving up on this front to try and cover the assault on the French line. Uh, now, my ally he's here is being a little bit uh, foolhardy. He's pushing forward. And look at the, this is kind of what they call in naval terms, uh, crossing the T, which is to say when a fleet is moving up straight, uh, imagine that's the, the base of the T, you want to cross the T, and that is exactly what the opponents are doing. They're going sideways, and the, you don't want to be on the base of the T. What happens on the base of the T is you can see, well, obviously here, you can't shoot anything, whereas look at all those ships. Every single one of those can face at you. So I'm not quite sure what my ally was thinking. He's going to try and brave this. And I, I, I don't quite know what he's doing. I think he's trying to do like a, a move like Trafalgar. Where he pushes forward. Tries to break the thin line. And then he's going to turn about and unleash on all of them. But uh, uh, you, you have to be able to crack through the opponent's line. And this is not quite going to be the case. He's charging forward. He's going to take a lot of fire. And he's just going to find himself uh, surrounded. Uh, mostly because he's going outside of the support. You can see all of the allied troops over here. We're trying to make an advance. I mean, we're sending forward our ironclad to sweep up the rest of the Portuguese from the back. But look at this group out here, fully exposed. And now I guess finally they can start to get some shots off. But some of the French vessels, uh, it looks like the French are actually targeting their sails, so trying to take these guys out. Um, in the meantime, I'm over here, and I'm trying to move up closer with my ironclad and my heavy first rates, um, bring these guys up. As I said, I'm keeping that army at bay, and then I'm going to try and take out the French. So you can see me starting to duel here, and what I'm trying to do is come to the rescue of this fleet that has come smashing headlong into the wall. He already has some of his guys set to repair the ship, so things are not going well for this, uh, you know, this rank of first rates. And now they can unleash in a typical uh, broadside to broadside fight, but he's fighting against two armies who have this surround on him, especially this ship right here, which is going directly for the sails. He wants a sitting duck fleet, uh, and that's what he's getting. Perfect shots for this commander, so I'm going to try and repay that. Um, you know, force him to take some damage from just sitting here. So I'm going to start to do that. Meanwhile, like I said, the entire army that's chasing after me, I'm going to go ahead and run away. Uh, I kind of have to at this point. Uh, I can't allow our allies to go down, so here we go. We're going to try and reform. And now the rest of the fleets are starting to commit. My ironclad is going to start to sit here stationary. French are also going to start eyeballing me from a while. Uh, from a distance away, but that's fine. I can start doing damage to them. And it looks like this maneuver is sort of starting to pay off. Look, we took a lot of damage. This first rate is kind of paying with its crew and its life, but we've been able to exchange 
um, kill this first raid, do a lot of damage to these first raids, and now we're cleaning up with some of our own, um, a lot of heavy forces. So it looks like we're completely flanking and chasing the Portuguese out. The French, meanwhile, are going to be sloping around on this position, trying to reform, but that's why I have my heavy first rates holding the corner of our force, trying to hold this entire army at bay. And now you can see the enemy forces, two armies, the French and the British, are going to be moving to corner my forces over here. So my ironclad is trying to move out of position. My heavy first rates are the ones kind of holding the backbone of my force. So many guns can come to bear. I am going to make sure that army stays at bay. Meanwhile, the Alfred is continuing to get just absolutely pounded. My force here can't stay out too long. He's already lost a pretty severe number of guns. Not too much, but a pretty good amount for the early engagement. But now I'm going to you know, punish the French third rate. Anyone who moves out of position. This is why I'm holding the corner. So this French fleet is going to turn about. But I can't stay there too long. Look at the entire British fleet here coming about. Doing an about face. Wanting to get some shots off against me. So I'm going to try and boogie on out of there. Keeping sure I have, you know, a third rate circling around the, the flank of the British fleet, making sure they can't completely go out and try and kill my heavy first rate. So now I've rejoined my allies. We seem to be doing okay. Um, the Alfred is kind of holding steady. Meanwhile, the rest of our fleet has gotten too bunched up. We're doing repairs and we're going to chase away the Portuguese, so we may be able to gobble up some of the remainders of that fleet. Um, my Ironclad got caught in a very interesting position. He got caught up with my ship here, and uh, he's being very brave. He's trying to hold the enemy away. He's trying to go here, get up close to the French, deal damage to them. Um, and I figured I could throw out my iron side, uh, ironclad ship because he has a lot of health and he can take the damage of that British fleet. And I was going to send him through here. You can see how the French are trying to repair. I want to take these guys out, lock them down, and allow us to get, look at all this fire, onto this French fleet. So I was kind of sacrificing my ironclad on the one hand to be a shield. You can see how the British forces are held back and they can't move forward on my force. And then also use him to kind of pin this French first rate the the magnificent so from all sides this is the role of this ironclad um so he's being the shield for our entire force and it looks like he's actually been able to uh no actually he's the one on fire so a lot of damage being dealt to my guy um and now he's going to withdraw so perhaps not the best sacrifice because at the end of the day this french ship is actually looking like he's going to be able to get out of there without us putting on too much fire um but he did again save um, kind of my guys. You can see the second my guy starts to route, then the French, the British, all these ships are going to turn about. So he sacrificed himself to buy us some time and hopefully, you know, change an iron, exchange an ironclad for this first rate. That may be a, a decent trade. And look at, look at our fleet. We are so bunched up here. Uh, this is going to be a problem. So that's why I'm trying to, uh, establish a, a line of defense with my, uh, heavy first rates. And I'm telling my guys, you know, pursue the, the, the Portuguese and reform so I'm gonna be the the bulwark against two armies two fleets in the distance my ship over here continue to do delaying action continuing with my first rate to just absolutely thrash this force and I'm gonna actually use this burning French ship as cover against the rest of the fleet back there uh, we can go ahead and look at the rest of the action over on this front and this is gonna be all these British ships all of these are ours so it's a, a total mess um, and I'm telling them pursue with haste pursue these first rates We haven't completely outgunned outmaneuvered chase them You can see they're almost you know down to half health to so chase them and don't allow them to get away So that's what we're trying to do um, But some of these ships are actually going to turn about and form a firing line on this position So um, it looks like uh, my allies don't want to commit too much to that it looks like they'd rather come and fight the main fight here Which is maybe a good idea the French magnificent not really living up to its name anymore. It is heaving <laughs> Oh my god, so much damage on this ship. It is ready to blow um, at any point in time. And it's kind of being a, a smoke screen and a shield against the French fleet. So my guy is a skilled general, uh, admiral I should say for sure, using uh, the enemy against, the, against them and doing the best I can to hold down this front. So here, again, my ironclad is here. That's fine. He's routing and he's again sh kind of, even in his death, um, allowing me to hold down this flank and prevent the ships from moving away. And meanwhile over here, my two... Uh, first straight guns. Oh, no, this is, is this me? Yeah, I think this is my ally. Um, actually coming in with the first rate, trying to, uh, to help hold these guys back. And my little third rate, Boyne, there, trying to hold back the opponents. Now, I did send another one over here. I think my third rate, yep, the Minerva over there. He's going to be going for the, the pursuit of the Portuguese. It looks like we're actually, yeah, I, once I saw my allies trying to pull back to my side, I said, no, I have this. Go ahead and pursue and force. Um, so there we go. We're going to be chasing down those Portuguese ships. I mean, you can't let three ships like that get away. Um, so I'm going to take the uh, sort of rear guard action over here. 
uh, hold in the vanguard and allow some of my allies, the Alfred, who took the brunt of that assault when we tried to, you know, when, when our T got crossed, he lost his mass. I'm going to be covering for his, um, him healing up, and so he's behind me giving me supporting fire. My Randolph is going to be pushing forward here. I'm hoping to cross this position, get some shots on the French, and then also perhaps get some shots on my uh, starboard side, you know, over here, and then also shoot at this guy if I can get double firing, that's perfect. So we actually have the enemy bottled up pretty nicely. Uh, and over here, I'm telling my ally to move on out of there. The opponents are going to soon. You can see how the, the, the French is now going to go here. The British are going to go to this side, and they're going to try and envelop this ship, so we have to get out of there. Meanwhile, my heavy first rate is taking a lot of damage, mostly from these ships now turning about. this uh, The Royal Oak, 106 guns, plus another 106 guns there, um, doing a lot of damage. But I was able to get my shots on that fleeing third rate, plus first rate here, plus my heavy uh, first rate coming back around. So I should be able to reverse the envelopment on this French ship. So that's what this battle has been, is a lot of reversals. Um, and meanwhile, in the distance, I'm having the rest of our ships try and reposition, try and heal up. And again, try and pursue the Portuguese, but the Portuguese are doing a good job of um, getting shots on and then retreating because they're running with the wind, so that's very good. So tactically, this is what's going on. This is the remainder of the fleet. Um, they're kind of forced at the extremity, trying to pick off a couple of our units. The palace, for instance, uh, was taking a lot of damage. Um, but my guys have successfully been able to rout, destroy, or all but you know hold the enemy push on this flank, but I have paid for it pretty dearly. Um, ironclad is down first heavy first rate here is down to 90 guns um, this guy however is pretty much pristine and he's gonna be putting on the hurt to the French ship so I'm trading pretty well um, these heavy first rates are doing very well and the rest of my first rates I believe are kind of chilling back over here yeah we're starting to reform our lines um, but my third rates are a little sketchy at this point they are meant for delaying action they can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those 106 rates um, so they're going to be pushing over here. You can see them trying to sloop over in this position. Help me take out the remainder of the, the French fleet over here. Some of them are, you know, routing or repairing. And I really have to take these guys out. So we're taking out little chunks of the opposing fleet. So I'm taking a bite out of the French here. Doing delaying action with my light ships from a distance. And then kind of letting my mean predators, um, these heavy first rate ships, which are so fun to play with, kind of do the digestion of the French fleet once I chop them out of the enemy forces. So it's going pretty well there. However, this British fleet is doing a good job of staying together and they're going to start penetrating our force. And now we're going to be caught in an odd position where we couldn't quite chase away the Portuguese. Uh, you can see an ex it's an extended battle, but they're doing a good job of presenting their more armored, less damaged flank against us. And we haven't been able to get the full surround on them. You can see one of my third rates trying to get this surround. Some of our ships are chasing, but a lot of the time we're spent idle, which means that the enemy, enemy has parity with us. They're exchanging well. And all the while, look at this. They're going to be moving with the rest. This is the main fleet that was caught on my side. And that fleet is going to be going here. And they're going to try and pincer our force and rejoin with the Portuguese. That's going to mean this irresistible ironclad ship is going to have to get on out of there before he gets sandwiched. So a lot of crazy tactics going on here that kind of have been uh, fluidly. You don't plan this ahead of time, but it's all about maneuvering, counter-maneuvering, um, swiveling about. And here is the graveyard of ships over on this side. Like I said, this is kind of the stomach of my fleet where I'm doing all the digestion of the forces that I've been able to take out. And it's also a place where we can go ahead and repair ships like the Alfred, who've taken a lot of damage. So here goes my ship. Um, the Boyne really done enough of his skirmishing. He's going to try and pull back behind this Magnificent and actually use him as a place to um, hide behind and actually try and repair. Um, that French fleet, uh, Hamiz, Hamiz, I guess. Uh, is going to try and get some parting shots on me. I'm going to try and get out of there in time. I'm going to send my Randolph there to try and, um, you know, help some of my lighter ships. And it looks like we've been able to actually destroy some of the French fleets, the Royal Oak. So the French are kind of going down. The French have been destroyed. Meanwhile, my ships are doing okay. Um, it is, however, on this front, where the Portuguese uh, are doing admirably well. They've been able to hold us off long enough. We're now going to have to go about we couldn't cut them off because the enemy fleet is going to be coming back and whoever this player is um, playing with the uh, the Raze ships he's doing a really good job he's been able to reform dodge my ships well enough and he was able to link up with the Portuguese fleet prevent them from being outnumbered and now he's going to be circling around on our fleet doing a lot of damage to them and it's up to me to now try and come back and chase these guys but uh, yeah very very back and forth battle this is one of the things I love about these naval fights 
Just gonna pan a little bit to get some of this fleet action going on here. Very epic once you get down to it. Uh, and now we're caught in a crossfire. And we need to stop moving forward. We need to stop. We can't go into the maw of this because these are first rates who have dropped their anchor. They've got their sights set and they're going to be destroying anything that comes here. So we really need to do an about face. It looks like this player um, is going to try and do that. However, he's doing it amidst the fire with no support. Our fleet is kind of tripping on itself. My own ships back here that we're trying to pursue the Portuguese ships, they stopped and they turned about me. So they're trying to um, get at me and here is the we're kind of in a long extended um, phalanx or not phalanx but uh, sh uh, echelon formation and this is the point of our formation and it's getting eaten alive the French have reformed they're going to be joining their uh, British allies and let's actually look at what it's like to be caught in the center of this uh, pincer movement I can't imagine what it would be like to be aboard these ships I mean take a look at this um, where is it that uh, the Hussar has Anomaly, he has 106 guns, 106 cannons, that's absurd. Imagine a land battle with 106 cannons. That seems like a pretty crazy, hectic, insane amount of guns on a battlefield. But these are all jam-packed on one ship. That is insane to imagine this. That that humans took part in this type of conflict is absolutely mind-boggling to me. To be on a ship with every li every single deck is you know crammed with guns, and then you have fleets with hundreds of ships all firing those guns, it's no wonder these battles were chaotic and very unpredictable and hard to control. It is insane. And hopefully this massive battle helps to convey a little bit of what's going on to you. In the distance, the digestion continues. I've been able to clean up the French and I'm going to start to come in pursuit. You can see me setting my markers here, um, but it's, it's too little too late at that point. It took me too long to clean up the French. And it's going to allow, oh my god, look at look at this perfect, I have to credit our opponents, look at this perfect envelopment they have on our front line. And we're going to try and break out of it by smashing through this position. It's not going to work. Um, again, we're tripping on ourselves. Even some of the, the units up on top are actually starting to get some musket fire. And that's in addition to all the cannon fire. You would have um, guys up in the crow's nest uh, sniping down officers and all that from the other ships. Just crazy stuff going on. Um, we're going to start, oh my god, I don't even know whose ship is who, it looks like, uh, no, these are our ships, and it looks like we've been able, these are, yeah, okay, these are our ships, we've been able to circle about and do a good amount of damage to the opponents, so we're trying to reform our line, let's see, the Portuguese have escaped, so they're going to um, hold that entire line, that, if you can see my cursor, that is the enemy line, they've, they've kind of formed up into one line, and some of our guys are still trying to go across there, trying to isolate the Portuguese. I'm going to send my Minerva over there. We're going to try and continue to isolate the Portuguese because even though it looks like, you know, they are putting on a lot of fire, they are down to almost no health. So we're hoping to separate the forces once more, cross the enemy T, um, and just destroy those guys. And that'll leave basically this clusterfuck of British forces. Half of them are already kind of retreating and sinking. Um, and so that would allow me time to get back here with the rest of my fleet which is moving slowly even though I have the wind on my side this is a lot of mass and a lot of force you need to provide through the wind to get this guy to move forward so he's lumbering ahead and I hope you guys do enjoy these battles it's definitely a different pace than uh, land battles a much harder to follow I would say so hopefully the commentary does help elucidate a little bit of what's going on and I think these are these are super fun battles I mean they're so epic I mean take a look at this site it's crazy wood exploding everywhere and it's ho I hope it's a, a time period they're able to revisit um, especially with combined land and sea battles that they've introduced in later titles like I said imagine 106 guns on a ship being able to engage and attack a uh, like do a combined assault on a on a port with just one or two of these ships supporting what does that make you think of uh, for me it makes me think of that scene in uh, the first Pirates of the Caribbean, the, where the uh, the Black Pearl shows up at a Port Royal and it just starts shelling the port and exploding everything. That's what I would love to see if they revisit this period. Here's the enemy force, like I said, lined up in a pretty good order and now they're going to be coming about and trying to deal with me. I'm now going to try and hold the line at this point. Turn about with my heavy first rates and see if they can live up to their name. But uh, the enemy ships do have good experience and they are first rates so at this point we kind of have the same number of guns I have a little bit more health and more guns uh, but maybe that's where the experience will make up for it for them so I'm now gonna be positioning myself in an interesting uh, place 
This Hussar is going to be taking the majority of fire from three ships, so our penetration of the enemy line, again, is seemingly working against us. We only have a couple ships left. Um, most of them, yeah, this one was stopped in its tracks. And it looks like the enemy have devoted just enough forces to try and destroy us. I mean, yeah, Portuguese still holding in resiliently. We're trying to surround, but we don't have enough firepower to bring those guys down. Something um, needs to be done. So now we've kind of... The, the battle has split in two. This British force, um, the commander, the admiral, is very, very good. The ship selection of veterancy, the way he maneuvers with them, is very good. And he's decided that he's going to go ahead and tackle my force and leave um, this battle kind of to his allies. So both the allies are going to be duking it out. But he knows that he has more ships, French, Portuguese... Um, they should be more than enough to take out our vessels. We still have some pretty, you know, this guy is fresh, the Dryad, but he's not. I don't know what's wrong with our Admirals. He should be turning him about and getting fire on these Portuguese ships. Um, so the the maneuvering is not quite so great here. Now he's finally going to be going into position. Um, and now it should be able to rectify um, a little bit of the balance there, but not very much. Now I do have a lot of firepower, but... This British player, like I said, is, is maneuvering very, very well. And he's been able to keep the majority of all his forces alive. So all of his guns, even though each one individually has less firepower than my own, he's going to be able to get on constant fire against me. And because of the low profile of the ships, many of my shots are not going to go through. I mean, I just got a full volley on that guy. And take a look at his health. Almost did nothing. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, meanwhile, his counter shots against me are going to continue to just do a lot of damage. One of my ships went down. This ship is going to start to lose more and more health. I have another one here, but uh, his left side is actually pretty severely damaged. Uh, so I'm hopefully hoping I can try and reload at some point uh, or repair myself. I oh, know it's the right side that's damaged. Okay, so I've positioned myself in a better uh, way. Continue to loop around. I'm going to try and isolate these guys. Maybe even get my, my starboard side to get some shots there. Um, but one of our routing ships here, who I was hoping to reform and come back to the fight, is actually going to, you know catch on fire and explode so yep that is pretty devastating some of that fire may be catching on my ship i'm not sure no it looks like i was far enough away but that is not good that means i have two ships here with maybe one more uh the alfred who took a lot of damage before um so two ships against five ships that's not good odds for us even though these are heavy you know heavy first rates Odds are starting to turn against me, so I'm going to try and position myself. Hold anchor here. You can see how the opponents are not in a good position. He's now going to be tripping on himself. He can't really maneuver, get the shots on he wants. Um, and I hope to turn that to my advantage. I'm hoping to take this ship out. And hoping to, to turn the corner on my guys, my opponent. Uh, meanwhile, over here, we can go ahead and take a look at the action. The opponents have lined up. Uh, and it looks like we've lined up as well. We're going to try and commit to this fight. Portugal seems to have lost one ship. He's down to three now. However, the French reinforced with two ships. A third and a first rate against what do we have to offer? One first rate, two first rate, and two third rates plus uh, irresistible. So odds are even over there. The British player is now going to try and break out of this position. He's sent two of his first rates over to my uh, the Alfred over here plus another uh, Raze targeting that guy. So he's he's very smart. He's going. He he says he doesn't want to tackle these uh, heavy first rates. He's going to send two of his lighter guys to try and tackle with me and then triple team this force here he's going for the knockout which is very very smart because i have less ships than him every single ship that he can knock out is devastating um if you were to add up all our firepower it's probably the same but his firepower is distributed amongst multiple ships so yes i can knock out one ship but every ship that i knock out knocks out less firepower if that makes sense so by focusing fire on one individual ship he can knock out firepower more quickly uh, if that makes sense so he, he's doing just that which is very very smart and the ship is now catching fire it's got you know one mast left there is no way this guy is going to come back to the battle um so he's he's a goner so now here comes uh, almost full gun first rate another pretty head you know pretty strong first rate turning about and now he's going to go and target again just like i was saying another one of my ships even these guys preemptively are going to start targeting uh my Randolph it seems like they have the Randolph in their sights he knows what his next target is he's going after him um, I'm gonna do everything in my power to try and prevent that from happening I'm gonna be targeting the Jamaica here with both my ships um, try and knock him out let's go ahead and take a look at the combat uh, happening over here um, yeah it looks like we're gonna be actually getting destroyed we took out one of the Portuguese ships so they're down to just a couple of them our guys still seemingly alive but the French ship the Royal Oak still 
somehow keeping it together, destroying those guys. So it looks like it's a, it's a pretty fair fight there. Uh, not too much going on. So it's kind of whoever can win their side of the battlefield will go to the um, the rescue of the other side. Again, he's sacrificing the Jamaica to hold off one heavy gun. And that's 122 or 111 guns over on that side. And the rest of his fleet is now going to be coming after my slow, lumbering Randolph. Come on, man. Turn about. You can do this. So kudos to this admiral. Uh, he's very, very good. And over here, the battle is going to start winding down. I'm going to fast forward this probably because you've seen kind of enough of our ships at this point. And uh, we're going to be going down. The Portuguese, I guess, did a lot of upgrades on this guys. That's why they haven't been routed. And now you can see this is the one side of the battlefield. Uh, I just fast forward a little bit so you could see our guys kind of being chased down. We have a couple ships left, but they're mostly isolated. We're trying to repair, but it's not enough. We're going to be taken out. So we're trying to retreat. The Portuguese, meanwhile, are surrounding the remaining guys. The irresistible ironclad ship trying to get back into the fight, but that is, he's kind of done with. Over here is going to be that very, very skilled admiral from the British side. And he's chasing down my heavy first rates, doing a divide and conquer approach on my guys, making sure I can't get the supporting fire I want. My Minerva is still in the distance trying to get supporting fire, um, but it's not enough. The opponents have done... Uh, their due diligence, they've destroyed one of my heavy first rates, and there goes um, a huge number of guns taken out of the action. And crews abandoning ship, this this vessel may actually explode in the near future. I'm going to turn about, and this is going to be the graveyard of ships on the right. I'm going to try and hide my vessel and take out this small little Aurora class gun uh, ship and just try and take him out, try and get retribution for what they did to my ship over here. And I'm actually kind of, I, the camera is around here, kind of like a bird of prey, because I, I want to see this ship blow up. I want to see the fire get to the ammo reserves. Uh, it's always a very, very cool sight. And here I am, hiding in the graveyard of ships, uh, trying to use it as cover from the opposing forces. And I think I'm going to start repairs here, but the deck is just, the deck needs to be swapped. This is filled with litter and corpses and... Man, it is not going well. I still can't break this vessel who's continuing to dance with me. I'm going to turn my better green side to the opponents uh, and try and get some of the shots there, but I'm continuing to take damage. It is not going well for us. Over on this far side where I said we were kind of engaged evenly before, the tide has finally turned against us. We only have a couple vessels. One of them is repairing. He's going to get triple team. Another vessel's here. We're kind of trying to run back, run the gauntlet back to our base, um, but the opponents are going to get us and there he goes here goes the heavy first rate so that is going to be devastating to the morale of my fleet to see that guy go down and it's actually going to crack the vessel in half while let's look at this that is so cool so there it goes black smoke in the air and here it goes my centurion i thought he would be able to survive to the end but nope looks like he was destroyed so that's going to be kind of it for our ships now that he's retreating we only have a couple of our vessels left um, and we're gonna be trying to run away uh, not much left my Minerva the guy who was skirmishing the entire time is trying to stay alive but right next to him he sees another ship go down and that's the Admiral aboard the ironclad so the the odds of staying alive at this point are slim to none so the Minerva is still getting his shots off uh, but he's now cornered on both sides scared. He's gonna tuck tail and run actually looks like we have another dryad 106 rate um, I'm gonna fast forward this just so you can see what happens. It's kind of inevitable what's going on uh, We're trying to maneuver trying to find a good place to to hide ourselves. It doesn't really exist Trying to scoot on out of here, but uh, the port I can't believe the Portuguese ship survived that entire time We did not do a good job pursuing them. Uh, they're gonna continue to put the shots on my guys and it looks like the British are actually going to come over from this side, the Queen vessel, and try and destroy me. So that's kind of it. I'm going to allow the battle to fast forward itself into the final stages just because uh, I can't stand the slaughter of my ships. And there you go. One of them, the Minerva, finally is going to rout. So I think this leaves, yep, the Dryad is the last ship alive on our side. But, I mean, look how many ships are kind of sitting around dead in the water. This is a bloody, bloody battle fought down to the last couple vessels looks like the French over there are actually starting to repair their ships I'm not quite sure why but this is the lone ship in the midst of there's nowhere for him to go he's got a fleet over there fleet over there 
fleet over here. He's in the midst of enemies. A guy dropped in the water amongst sharks. Uh, good luck to you. There he goes. He is now going to be closing on the Portuguese ship. And I've been watching this the entire time. He's just been getting rocked by volleys after volley after volley. So there he goes. That's going to be the end of our fleet. Very significant uh, action. And again, I can't wait till they revisit this era of Total War. I can't wait to see more of these massive naval battles with even more explosions, more ships, and the integrated assets of maybe being able to fight on land where you can have supporting batteries shooting at the enemy vessels and then maybe some other action taking place. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this fight. So uh, let's go ahead and look at these statistics. And there you go. So I actually was wondering why the battle wasn't ending. It's because I had one, my, my one ship came back and he was, uh, he tried to be sneaky, but no, he got flattened by all the ships in the vicinity. Anyway, as you can see, the end results here, it looks like, uh, it's hard to tell with naval battles, kind of what happens here. Um, I lost two of my ships. SLM Maximus lost three. I think he's the one who tried to breach through the enemy forces right in the beginning, but he paid for that dearly. Um, so fun battle. Unit statistics you can see here. I uh, mostly losses on my side, but the the Randolph and the Centurion seem to have gotten a lot of kills. Those are the heavy first rates. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know again what you'd like to see in terms of battles in the future. Hope you guys don't mind these big naval battles. I do love fighting them, and I love the atmospherics and the scale of them. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have more of those and others in the future. Thanks so much for commenting. I look forward to seeing what you guys would like to see in the future. Peace out.